Hey everyone, it's Vita with VitaLock Media. Uh, thanks so much for checking out this video on how to add music to your Zoom room. Three ways to get clearer sound. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. So you've probably been using Zoom a lot more than you might, may have in the past. And with that comes a, kind of a new landscape, I would say. And within this new landscape, you've probably figured out most of how to operate and move around Zoom and you know all the commands, you know how to mute and unmute your participants, you know how to put them in breakout rooms, all of the awesomeness. And now you want to look at adding music to your Zoom room, either such that you can have writing music or dance music or, you know, partner music, any of the types of musics that, that you usually use at your live event, you want to look at how to translate them to the online space, specifically using Zoom. And maybe you've done this already a few times and you're trying to figure out uh, a, little bit, a little bit more refined way to um, facilitate this such that you can get clearer sound. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you the three options. Uh, that I have discovered and that I use and that I teach my clients as well as my colleagues on how to get clear sound uh, with their music going into Zoom rooms. At the end of this, I will also touch on things to be mindful of in regards to Zoom in general and how they handle music that's being piped in to Zoom rooms. And I will let you know a couple of settings to make sure that you disable uh, such that you can get crisp, clear sound. Okay, so we're going to start off. So number one, the first option is playing music into Zoom from directly within Zoom. So to get started, you're going to obviously log into your Zoom account. For this demonstration, we'll be using the desktop application of Zoom, so the downloaded version. Uh, I know some of y'all log into Zoom Rooms via a URL, and this is for folks that are actually using Zoom on the desktop app, either on PC or Mac. Uh, this demo is specifically for Mac, although the steps and the process would be much the same for a PC. So one, you're going to open a Zoom Room. Two, once you do that, you're going to click the green share button that's down on the lower panel window. It's in the middle. It's green to the left of it, you know, the all the way on the left is mute, unmute your mic, turn your video on and off, so on and so forth. And then you see the green share button. If you do not see the green share button, or if it does not let you click it, uh, you are probably not the host of that room. Uh, so you'll have to be either the host or the co-host of the room that you are in to be able to do this. And I know some people block other folks uh, that are in the room that aren't hosts or co-hosts from sharing screens. And so just putting that out there that you would definitely need to be either the host or the co-host. Under this option of playing music into the Zoom room, there are two additional options. So there's option A and option B. Option A is where you play music while sharing a screen that is not your video. What I mean by this is if you're sharing slides or you're sharing a website or you're sharing a Word document, things such as this, uh, and you also want to play music. This also works if you want to play audio from like an iPhone or an iPad that you have hooked up and you want to be able to demo an app or something on the iPhone. Maybe you want to play the video from the iPhone or the iPad. This will also work for that. So first of all, as I shared, you open a new window, open a new Zoom room, and then you click the share button down at the bottom. You're going to choose which screen or window you want to share with everyone. So the new window that opens up after you click the share button will show you all of the screen options that you have to be able to share. Before you click on which window or browser window or whatever that you'd like to share, you need to ensure that the share computer sound button in the bottom left hand corner of the window has a check mark in it. So to make that check mark appear, you just click the little box. And then you're going to select whichever window you want to share. So for mine that I usually use when I'm doing uh, my community discussion sessions is I share my desktop too because I have my computer hooked up to two different uh, screens. So I share desktop too, which is where I keep my slides. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and then click the bottom share computer sound and then that's it. And then I just click the blue share button in the right hand corner and it will now show my slides 
to everyone else as well as share whatever sound is coming through my computer. I would invite you to be mindful of this will literally pick up anything that you are playing from your computer. So say you're playing, um, say you have Skype open and someone decides to call you and you don't have, you know, your notifications for Skype off, it will pick up the sound of someone calling you from your computer and feed it into your room. So you want to make sure that you close out any other windows that you have open or any other applications that you have open such that you do not encounter um, sounds that you don't want being piped into this room being piped into the room and this option is really great for you if you do not have outboard audio gear you want to show slides and play music at the same time or you know you want to have just a standard slide on the screen while you play music as you let folks join your presentation i do this as well um along with you know playing regular slides i have a slide at the the top of my slide deck that says hey we will get started in a minute thank you so much for being here and depending on which presentation i'm doing i'll have other information on there such as like my venmo if folks want to donate if i'm doing a dj set or anything else uh, and i want to also say that i play all my slides from google slides just within my google drive uh, such that, you know, if I'm on the go and I want to do this on someone else's computer or I want to, you know, have my iPad to look at my slides while they're also playing on my computer, um, I can do that. I can access them directly from my Google Drive. And also, this is really great for you if you want to show a video during your presentation and ensure that people can actually hear the audio from it. So say you want to show like a, a YouTube video or a video that you've made and you want to be able to like premiere it to these folks or show them if you're showing them how to do a how-to or something like this or even if you build this into your presentation somewhere within your you know transitioning from your live event to your online event uh, you'd be able to do this uh, also this is great for you as i already mentioned if you want to show off an app demo that has sound on it so i know that folks these days are really looking at gamifying things and with gamifying like applications and things such as this uh, sound is really important it feeds our, our psychology, especially if you have someone like clicking that they've completed a task and, you know, you have a little ding that goes off. Uh, so that would be beneficial for folks that are doing app demos that have that requirement. This is also beneficial for you if you have a USB microphone plugged in. And there are many other options, I'm sure, that you can figure out that this would work well for. And those are just the ones that came to mind right now. And again, things to be mindful of, uh, ensure that all of the other applications are either muted and don't play notifications or that they are closed and if you're on a mac there's actually a way for you to um turn off your notifications much like you can on uh, your iphone and your ipad there's a do not disturb button the do not disturb button uh if you look at your screen i've i've included a couple of screenshots um so the do not disturb button is up in the right hand side of your uh, your desktop. See those little lines up at the right hand side right next to the, the magnifying glass, which is the search bar. If you click the, the right hand lines, a new window pops open. Typically, it'll say the day at the, the date at the top as well as the day. And then it'll have a list of what you have on your calendar. If you scroll up a little bit, you will see two options. One is night shift and one is do not disturb. If you ensure that Do Not Disturb is on, it will mute the, the, the desktop notifications from showing up on your screen, as well as turn off the sounds. Second, I definitely encourage y'all to use Night Shift, even when it's not night. Uh, it takes away some of the blue light that is emitted from your screen. You also have that as an option on your phone, by the way. Uh, but yeah, other things to be mindful of. Actually, I think that's it for that one. So this is now option b so option b is playing music while still sharing your video so this option it's the same sort of setup so you click the bottom share button you, you click the green button in the bottom of your window the share button uh the new window that opens up up at the top it says advanced, but before you click that, you're going to again want to click share computer sound down in the left hand corner of that window that first opened when you click the share button. And then you navigate over to advanced at the top. Once 
you navigate over to advanced, you're going to choose the middle option that says computer sound only. Once that is selected, press the blue share button. You are now sharing your computer sound, so whatever is playing from iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever you have your music piping in through. Um, it's now sharing that as well as still showing your face on video. This is really beneficial for you if, again, you do not have outboard audio gear and you want to play music during like a writing session, a guided meditation, or as you speak. Uh, I've had folks reach out to me about using this as an option if they're like doing dances so that maybe some I know someone that has a, a business offering that's called um, I know someone that offers dance mornings like dance parties in the morning on zoom so this option is great for them two I know some folks that want to do karaoke on zoom this would be the option for them and three I know folks that are doing freestyles and raps and performances within zoom rooms and this option is for them as well and this is also really awesome if you definitely have a USB mic plugged in. Like, it'll work. It's great. Okay, so option two of the three options. Uh, this is sharing music through a USB audio interface while also using an external mic. So my microphone that's currently hooked up is hooked up to my USB audio interface. And this is how I pipe music into my Zoom room if I'm not playing it from iTunes. And just to share a little bit more about that, I, I play uh, music from my iPad hooked up to my audio interface to alleviate some of the computer usage as well as internet use that I'm using while I'm giving my presentations. So this option is also great for you if you'd like to do that, if you'd like to keep those things in mind and those are important for you. So again, you are going to go through the same sort of steps. You're going to click the green share button you are going to again click the advanced tab at the top after you've selected the computer sound only button the share computer sound in the lower hand corner of that first window then the new window that pops up you are again going to click computer sound only and then you're going to press the blue share button this is going to be sharing your music whatever you have plugged into your audio interface into your zoom room Things to be mindful of this is that this route requires that you have your computer unmuted in the Zoom room. Um, and that's because your audio interface is acting as your microphone input. And so for you to actually get the sound to roll through in there, you'll have to leave um, the room on the microphone unmuted. Uh, so if you have a microphone hooked up to your USB audio interface, you would need to manage the volume, whether you have it on or off or high or low on your actual audio interface. If you're using phantom power, like I am on my condenser, I would not suggest turning the phantom power on and off. That will introduce a popping noise each time you do that. So definitely use uh, the knob, right? The fader. If you do not have an external mic hooked up via your interface, you'd have to mute whatever microphone you are using. So if you have a USB mic or if you're using the built-in mic, the built-in mic Honestly, you wouldn't really have the option of muting and unmuting without impacting the audio, the music from being piped into the room. So for built-in mics, I would encourage y'all to be cognitive of any noise that's going on in your area and to do your best to limit it. And things to be mindful for all of these options, uh, definitely test your sound levels prior to hosting a Zoom room. What I usually do is I will join the Zoom room from my phone while hosting it on my computer. Uh, to test out, you know, the levels and see how the audio sounds. Um, as well as, uh, usually I'll have a friend or like a colleague join in and tell me how it sounds to them. But if they're not available, I just, you know, host it from my computer and sign into it from my phone. The other thing to be mindful of is that you definitely have to set your levels for all of these. Uh, if you do not do this step of checking the levels, um, you run the risk of having the music way too freaking loud to be honest uh, and having distorted sound come through but also you know impacting the hearing and the listening the ears of your viewers okay and so now we're going to touch on the settings so this is the third route for making sure that you get supremely amazing clear and crisp sound piping into your zoom room so this step is you're going to have to turn off Zoom's built-in audio processing settings. So what I've been telling folks is 
you know, when Zoom was created, I do not think that they considered folks would be doing all of the awesome things that they're doing with music. And they really centered, you know, the video as well as it being a vocal based application. And because of such, they have built in a couple of really awesome audio processing settings. Uh, They're awesome if you're literally just using Zoom for video and voice. If you're using it for music, it introduces some issues such as sound quality loss as well as what folks are referring to as like ducking. So if I had a beat playing right now and I didn't have my audio settings disabled, as the beat was playing, if I began to talk over it or sing over it or, you know, do my spoken word over it, the beat would drop out a little bit uh, because my vocals, the vocal range, the, the frequency range of my vocals would begin to compete with the frequency range of the music. So to turn off these sa- these settings, you open the preferences window. How you open the preferences window is if you're on Zoom, up in the left-hand corner where it says zoom.us, it's your, your top head bar, your top menu bar, rather. Uh, you click zoom.us, the drop-down that pops open, I believe it's a second or third option, it says preferences. You click preferences, the new window that opens is your settings. Um, and on the left-hand side, you'll see a bunch of options, and you're going to click the one that says audio. Once you open the audio tab, you will click advance down in the right-hand corner. Once you click the advance in the right-hand corner, you will see a few new options pop up on your screen. Under audio processing, there's suppress persistent background noise and suppress intermittent background noise, as well as echo cancellation. Echo cancellation, you cannot turn off. You could only have it on auto or aggressive. Uh, So the first two are the ones you're gonna want to disable. Suppress persistent background noise, as well as suppress intermittent background noise. Uh, Suppress persistent background noise, this acts as a high pass filter, so it only allows high frequencies through and blocks all the lows. This is really beneficial for vocals if you're in a room where there's like a fridge humming in the background or things such as this. Uh, Suppress intermittent background noise. This acts as a low pass filter, so it only allows low frequencies through. And this is really great if there's a lot of like forks, clinging glasses, like say you're at a cafe and there's like a lot of high pitched sounds, like someone opening a door, all these different things, chairs moving around. Uh, It all, this, these, that setting allows for Zoom to block those frequencies as much as possible. However, together, they allow only a limited window of frequencies to pass, which, as I've said, is typically centered on vocals and not music. If you have music issues, like I've already said, such as loss of quality or ducking when you talk while playing music in your Zoom room, this will remedy them. So, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Those were the three ways to get clearer sound while using Zoom and playing music into your Zoom rooms. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out. I do offer um, low-cost or donation-based consultation calls at this time, as well as I have my uh, very well-known AV concierge calls. Uh, And you could book both of those on my website. I'm here celebrating you and cheering you on as you pivot into the online space as well as just in general. I am definitely honoring your journey and celebrating all of your successes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.